Hello there. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to calculate the economic order quantity and reorder points. The questions covered in this video relate to problems 12.9 and 12.11 in your text. Let's start with problem 12.11. Here we have the annual demand for binders at a stationary shop to be 10,000 units. The owner operates her business 300 days per year and finds that deliveries from her supplier generally take five working days. We have two requirements. The first is to determine the reorder point for the notebook binders, and the second is just to discuss why it's important to the owner. The formula for reorder point is daily demand, or little d, times the lead time, or LT. Little d daily demand is determined using the annual demand, or big D, divided by the number of business days. So the daily demand is equal to 10,000 units annually, divided by 300 business days, or 33.33 units per day. The lead time we know is 5. So the reorder point is equal to 33.33 times 5, which equals 166.67, or rounded to 167 units. If we were to see what this looks like visually, although we don't have enough information to determine exactly what the economic order quantity is, it really doesn't matter for illustrative purposes. When we place an order for whatever the EOQ is, once the order is received, the assumption is that the product is sold evenly over time. So you can see that the red line starts at some EOQ and will eventually reach zero. With our reorder point set to 167 units, the inventory system will trigger a reorder once inventory reaches that level, and customers will continue to purchase the notebooks over the next five days, which is when the next shipment of the economic order quantity will arrive, and the green line then replenishes the entire inventory back to the economic order quantity, and the process repeats. For requirement B, why is that number important to Duncan? Well, it simply allows for the buffer of inventory to prevent stocking out while waiting for the order to arrive. Now we'll move on to problem 12.9. Here, Bell Canada stocks switch connectors at its central warehouse. The annual demand for these connectors is 15,000 units. The company estimates its holding cost to be $25 per unit, and the cost to place and process an order from the supplier is $75. The company operates 300 days per year, and the lead time to receive an order from the supplier is two working days. We have four requirements. The first is to determine the economic order quantity, or EOQ, then determine the annual holding cost. The third requirement is the annual ordering cost, and the fourth requirement to determine the reorder point. For requirement A, EOQ is equal to two times the demand times the ordering cost to divide by the holding cost, and we take the square root of that. So the square root of two times 15,000 times 75 divided by 25, that's 300 units. For requirement B, the annual holding cost is equal to the average inventory, or Q over 2, times the holding cost. So our 300 unit EOQ divided by 2 times the $25 holding cost gives us an annual holding cost of $3,750. The formula for annual order cost is equal to demand divided by quantity, or EOQ, times the order cost S. That's 15,000 units per year divided by 300 units times $75, and that's $3,750. Requirement D is to determine the reorder point. The formula for that is the daily demand, or little d, times the lead time. The daily demand, little d, is equal to big D, or the annual demand, divided by the number of working days. And we multiply that by the two-day lead time. 15,000 divided by 300 is 50 days, times 2 gives us 100 units. If you were to see what this looks like visually, with an economic order quantity of 300 units, an order is placed for 300 units. And because one of the assumptions is that the inventory is drawn down linearly, then at 100 units, the system will trigger a reorder of the next 300 units, and there will be a 50-day gap between when the order is placed and when the order is received. This allows the company to have inventory buffer between when it places the order and when the next shipment is received to make sure that the company doesn't stock out. And that process repeats itself over and over again.